Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, NBA slate. And I'm doing this solo today, which means that I'm not going to be going game by game. Uh, I'm going to be kind of doing an overall top-down look at the slate. We're going to talk about what type of slate it is. And then we are going to, you know, go over how I use my sheets to build lineups on a slate like this and maybe build kind of a hand-built lineup. And then we're going to use Sabersim to kind of give you a, a look at what type of what type of builds we'd get if we use Sabersim to build. Now, again, this is early in the day, um, and I'll be available live. Uh, maybe Bobby will be there as well uh, at 6 o'clock to go over, you know, late late uh, injury news and things like that, which is where the real, you know, real important stuff happens. But again, whenever I do the videos, I, I – would love to keep these as instructional. In other words, yes, this, this is going to apply to this tonight, tonight's slate. All right, I'll give you an idea of what what I, we probably should be doing. But I, I'd like to again keep this site as as focused as possible on teaching, and, and teaching not on just how to get through tonight's slate, but how to get through others. So anyway. Um, it is a seven game slate. Um, and when you pull up my sheets, which are uh, available on TrueDFS for, for premium subscribers, you will see what type of slate it rates to be. Right. So what I'm doing is I, I'm rating these players by sheets value score, um, which is my way of kind of ranking these players. It's a, it's a nice combination of point per dollar um, plus just overall upside. And Actually, we're going to first rate them by sheets value score, whatever, and then we're going to do it by uh, by uh, point per dollar. And the first thing that you'll notice is that the top sheets value score play is three thousand. Right? Now, now, when that happens, it is extremely rare. Uh, it is an indication that that value is just about as good of a value play as you're going to get, um, and it's probably where you want to start your lineups. And usually when you have a 3K guy that has a sheets value score of 200, you probably end up playing him in 100% of your lineups. I mean, you just do. Um, now, again, the reason for this is, as you might be able to derive, um, Golden State is basically resting all their players. So um, all the reserves and the secondary starters are just going to get a ton of usage. And that's why you have Ty Jerome with a 27-point projection. So – when you have a situation like this, the type of slate that is going to be is stars and scrubs, right? And we talk about this a lot. Um, whenever you have really, really good value, and when I say really good, that means some good, you know, 7x and above value, then it usually is conducive to playing those guys alongside of, of the studs, such as, look, Luka, Jokic, and Giannis, uh, and to some degree, LeBron. Um, if you didn't have good value up at the top, that, or excuse me, uh, for, for, for cheap, then you probably end up having to, you know, look to play middling type builds. Um, but here, when you have a 3K guy who's at the top of the sheet value score rankings, it should give you an idea of what type of build it's going to be. Probably stars and scrubs, almost definitely. Now, just for fun, before we even get into this, and we already touched on Luka, Jokic, Giannis being top spends, let's sort these by point per dollar as well. Now, when you sort, sort, the, sort, sort the slate by point per dollar, you will see that the top six guys are all coming from Golden State, and they have point per dollar rankings anywhere between five and three quarters to all the way up to nine. So you have Kuminga also with a 7x projection, and then you have down to Jordan Poole. So this is where the value is going to come from. I will caution, uh, I would say that this value, except for Jerome and Kuminga, We'll get to pool in a second is good, but not, you know, unfadeable, you know, like the Wiseman's uh, and, and, and DiVincenzo and Looney, for example, they're only projected to be six X and below, you know, it's not like that great. Um, but Ty Jerome and, and Kuminga really do kind of stand out. Okay. So the next thing you like to do to rate players is, is, you, you you sort by those two columns and you're looking for two different things. Let's go back to sheets value score here. So when we sort by sheets value score, what you're looking for 
are the cheapest guys around that make it into this top quadrant. So what does that mean? Well, when you rate guys by sheets value score, by its nature, it favors those players that are high salary. It favors those players that just have high fantasy point production or high fantasy point projections. So if you can find lower priced guys that rate well by sheets value score, those are pretty strong plays. Like, for example, uh, Ty Jerome, we already mentioned. Jordan Poole, very, very strong play. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, these would probably be the two guys you'd want to start your lineups with if you didn't care about ownership, obviously, because these guys are both going to be probably the two most popular players on the slate. But nonetheless, they are both very, very strong plays. Um, other guys you, you want to look at, maybe um, uh, Bam Adebayo, not bad, 7,900. Um, Miles Turner, 7,300, not bad. Okay. So these are the types of plays that are going to kind of stand out, um, especially if you want to, you know, play some middling type builds as well. Um, Donovan Mitchell, 8,100 seems, I mean, that seems a little, a little ridiculous if you want to know the truth. Um, so he looks like a really, really strong play also. So talking about Mitchell, uh, Bam, not so much DeRozan, but Poole, Jerome, that's when you're looking at it from a uh, sheets value score perspective. Now, when you do it from a point per dollar perspective, what you're looking for is the inverse. So what does that mean? Well, when you rate guys by point per dollar, the, the players who usually get the biggest benefit from that method of ranking are the cheaper guys. So what you're looking for is when you're rating these guys by point per dollar, you're looking for the most expensive guys you can that are in that top quadrant, okay? Um, and sometimes you get the same types of guys. Like, for example, uh, Jordan Poole, again, very, you know, decent salary for this type of point-per-dollar projection, so very strong play. Jared Allen, 6,300, that looks like a good play. Once again, Bam Adebayo, 7,900, good play. Miles Turner, again, pretty good play, right? So these are the types of guys that that, that you're looking for. You're looking for either guys with a high, uh, you know, uh, when you, either guys rated well in sheets value score they're cheap, and or guys that are rated well in, at point per dollar who are expensive. And no matter how you slice it, you're getting to Jordan Poole today. No matter how you slice it, you're getting to Ty Jerome today. Um, but then it depends on how you want to build. I mean, you could you could play Jared Allen and. That, I think that's probably a neat little way to play, especially consider his ownership is, is a little bit lower. Maybe Bam at 7,900. Um, that's that's actually not bad either. Miles Turner, it's no, it's no secret that all these guys are centers. Um, and then what really we have to kind of determine is how you want to play these studs, right? Because listen, if you're going to play Jerome, you're going to save a lot of money, maybe with Kaminga. It, you could probably play, and we're going to try it. We're going to, you could probably play two of these studs, you know, either, either Luca, Jokic, or Giannis. And, and they all rate to be about the same as far as sheets value score. They all rate to have about the same projection, about the same ownership. So it, you really can't go wrong uh, with any of them. Um, uh, it's definitely a decent sized drop to LeBron. So I don't know if I'm going to get to him, but, but Luca. Jokic, Giannis, you know, one or probably two of those studs with Jerome, Poole, Kaminga. That, that's probably where you want to start. So let's do that. Let, let, let's start. Let's, let's try to make some builds with these guys and let's see how easy it is um, and then how difficult it could be. So let's, let's, let's do exactly what we said. Let's, let's put in um, Jerome, uh, Ty Jerome, we'll put in Kaminga. Kuminga power forward at 3,700. All right. So now let's put in who's our favorite between Luka, Giannis, and Jokic. Let's, let's, um, well, since Ty Jerome was point guard only, Luka would have to put in guard and utility where, and well, you know what? Kuminga was power forward only. So Giannis, we'd have to put in center or forward. 
doesn't really matter too much. So let's just let's just take a look at um I don't know. Uh, let's look at the most expensive ones just to see what it looks like. So let's put in Luca. And then we'll put in most next most expensive one is Giannis. So we'll put Giannis here in the forward position. And we're starting with oh, well, you want to put him in the center? No, we're gonna put him in the forward position. So you put all put both of them in along with these two, then you still have 4750 per man left to left to play. Okay. So let's take a look and see what we would do. So at 4750. Um, well, you want to play, you want to play, uh, what's his name? Uh, pool. Right, we talked about him already, so it's kind of hard to fade that. And he fits nicely here. So now what you have to figure out is whether you have enough in good $4,200 players to fill the rest of it in. So let's take a look and see what we got. Um, and again, uh, this is just right now as of this slate. Okay. So I, you know, I hope you don't take this to mean this is exactly who we're playing. Because everything can change. Well, let's see. Who am I missing here? So, Wiseman at 3K. Tillman, 4,200. Powell, 40. So, all these guys are centers, which makes it somewhat interesting. Aaron Neesmith, 3,600. Um, so, all these guys are pretty playable. Uh, what's interesting is that if all these centers are going to be the guys you want to kind of pick from, maybe, again, maybe the Jokic play is not the best. Maybe you want to stick to, say, Lucas and, and Giannis. So, who was a small forward though? Because that's I don't recall seeing a great play. Oh, you could play Dorian Finney Smith, which you don't want to do. But Neesmith, you could play him at 3,600. So just like, for example, put in Neesmith over here. And then you could pl really play either of those centers that we talked about. I mean, we can't fill the whole lineup in, but. You know, let's just, I'll just remind you of who you play. I mean, like one Wiseman, Tillman, Allen, Powell, you know what I mean? So you can make these hand built lineups with the two studs work really, really well. Um, if you play Jerome, Kuminga, and Poole. Now, again, this is not going to be particularly earth shattering. A lot of people are going to do this, but nonetheless, it is still a kind of a good way to play. Um, just for fun, what would a what would a lineup look like if we played any of the middling guys? I mean, it's going to be pretty, pretty low on way to play. Like you play like a Jared Allen. And then instead of, I don't know, instead of one of these studs, let's say we got rid of Giannis and you went 7,300 a man. Who are some of those good 7,300s we talked about? And is this worth it? Um, Talked about Bam. That wasn't a, that wasn't too bad. Talk about Jared Allen, Miles Turner, Hero, DeRozan. You know, so you can do that because you have seventy three hundred per player here. Okay. Uh, one second. Sorry, I had to grab that, but I mean that's really what you want to do. I mean, when, when you're hand building on today's card, I mean, it just makes it really really easy. Now you can make some some well-meaning pivots, you know, whatever, but it's a pretty, pretty straightforward type of slate. Now, what I'm curious to see is if you inputted these projections into Saberson, if what type of exposure you would get to these same guys. Um, now, I'm, I'll make a guess as I do this. I'm going to predict that you get 100% pool, 100% uh, Ty Jerome and maybe a hundred percent uh Kuminga as well with two studs in a hundred percent of lives. I don't think there's gonna be any room for creativity with respect to Sabres, but let's uh, let's just try. Okay. It's just way too much value. So 150 lineups. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna predict one of those were 100, 100, 100. We shall see. Uh, no, look at that. How do you like that? Um, so almost 100% Ty Jerome. But interestingly, not 100. 
Um, and that, that is, that is somewhat relevant because what I was going to do, I was thinking I was going to get a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, and then I was going to make it a thousand lineups to see, but it doesn't take more than 150 to get different. So, so this is not as brutal as I thought. Um, so Kuminga 90%. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would expect. Cool. 85. I would expect. And then a big drop. So Vincenzo DeRozan, Allen, Looney, only 25% Giannis, though. Very interesting. And then only 16% Luca. And then, what, no, no Jokic? Is that, is that, is that correct? Uh, uh, tw only 12% Jokic. So what Saberson will have us do is what I was just alluding to before, and that those middling builds, um, uh, something like this, you know, with Hero, uh, that has Luca though. Um, something like this with Dinwiddie, Poole, DeRozan, Butler, Vooch, which is interesting. Um, so while I thought it was, listen, listen so while I thought it was going to be totally stars and scrubs, it's not as stars and scrubsy as I thought, which is extremely interesting. Um, and that's why I use Saber Sim to check to not to check my work. Is it not Saber Sim's right or wrong? Or whatever. It's just running programs. Um, so my point is, is that just because you think it's stars and scrubs doesn't mean it has to be that way. I mean, there's mid range plays are are you put two or three of them together, they carry with them a lot of meat. Um, okay, so that will do it for the preview of, of the slate. Now it'll come come back at like six where we actually build these things and, and you know take into account late news and and and, and, and uh, starters and things like that. But this is the process. This is the, what I do to build my lineups. And hopefully you guys can learn from that and improve on it. Um, actually, hold on. The one other thing I want to look at is, yeah. So I don't know if I would, I, I'm looking at stack types here. I don't know if I'd be interested in playing five guys from one team. So I might, you know, X those out. But that that we'll we'll deal with that later. Okay, uh, that'll do it. Good luck.